Now, before we begin with creating a dimension in PMI, you always want to make sure that the PMI application is active. You want to go up to the top to make sure that you see the PMI tab. And inside the tab, we're going to go ahead and you can see that the dimension commands are located in the dimension group. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can go through all of them when you take the course. Now, next, I want to go to the resource bar. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the MBD or Model Based Definition Navigator tab. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the standard node to view the different views. Now, before creating the dimension, we want to check to see which model view is the work view because the PMI feature you're going to create will be added to that particular work view. In this case, I want to add the dimension to the trimetric view. So this one here, which is already considered the work view as it shows here and it's displayed. I want to also notice that there is no PMI node yet. This is because there are no PMI objects or features for this model. Once I make the first PMI feature, a PMI node will display just under the standard node. And the feature I create will be listed in the PMI node and it will be in the trimetric view, which is the work view. So now I'm going to select the rapid dimension. And if you notice, that the rapid dimension dialog is nearly the same as the rapid dimension command used in drafting applications. The rapid dimension is basically a quick method of creating a dimension where the type is inferred. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to create the rapid dimension between these two circles. So up at the top we have our references and here I'm going to select for the first object I'm going to hover over this hole here until the center highlights and I'm going to go ahead and select it and we have the arc center I'll select it up there and now I'm going to select the second object and I'm going to select that here and now notice here I get this particular uh, dialog which will allow me to put information inside of it that is into the PMI and it appears every time I stop moving the dimension so if I move it over here you'll see it reappears but as I start to move the dimension it disappears now the next part we have to do is we want to figure out where we want to place the dimension on what plane or origin so we can specify a location which is where we want to put it on the plane and we can also then specify the plane itself now we can go here to specify the plane or I can use an alternate plane and if we look closely I'll zoom in here you can see that we have a dashed line and then we have this solid line and these are the planes that it's giving me an alternate to choose from by default so if I select this under alternate plane and select this particular button notice now the plane that's shaded I'm back in but this is now here and the one that we were previously on is now the dashed line so for this instance I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select and stay on this particular plane and if you look also we have it has made associated objects it's selected the two objects in the model and our method for the measurement is inferred if I drop down we can also change that if you want to any of these of say horizontal vertical or point to point but for this instance, I'm going to leave it as inferred now the next portion is that we can when I stop moving I can then slide my cursor up over into this dialog box here where it's going to give me all these different choices to change and edit the actual rapid dimension that you see right there. Now up here we have this drop down menu. This is the method. 
Next we have the alternate plane. And then here we have the tolerance type, which I can change here. Here for this instance, I'm going to go no tolerance. Next we have the inspect, if we want to make this an inspection dimension, we'd select that. Next we have the orientation of the text. So I can select how I want to place the text within the dimension. And then we have here is we have the edit appended text. And this is for a, an expanded cat capability. You would select this. So if I select on this, notice I get this dialog, which is very long. And if I don't want to do anything with it, I can just go ahead and hit close and I'm back to my rapid dimension. Now we see you have text boxes above, before, uh, after, and below our dimension. Here you can enter any type of appended text, you know, again, above, before, after, or below the dimension itself. Now the center is the dimension, and these are the decimal places of the dimension. Now here we have it set to three. I'm gonna go ahead and place that to two. And down here we have is the reference. If we want to make this a reference dimension, we would select this button here. And then over here we have text settings. If I go ahead and select on that, here I can change the text settings and it gives me all these different topics and how to do that. If I want to change the lettering with the alignment, tolerance, the stacking, tolerance here we have a dual to show a dual dimension style for format and then we get into the text itself we can change the units we have orientation again and we can change it and these are very similar to the ones of the dialogue that we were just talking about if I go down to format dimension text now here I can change the actual color. So if I select on this, I'm going to select black, select OK. Now that's changed. And if I go to close, now we can't see the color just yet. When we finish changing things on our, on our rapid dimension, then we can take a look and see what we have. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to select and place right here in the center and notice now our dimension with the text is black now if I want to change the rest of the dimension lines or the arrows I can go in and select on them oops let's first close that out and I'm going to actually go back well, let's first take a look at this um, before going back and editing those lines what I'd like to show is the MBD Navigator, notice now we have the PMI node. As I spoke before, there wasn't one, now there is. And now if I open this up, we'll see that we have a dimension. And we can see that it's a linear dimension. And if I select on it, it's highlighted in our model. Now I'm going to go ahead and if I right click on it, I have I can edit, I can hide it, or I can even delete it. I can change the settings from here and everything else. I'm going to go ahead and go back to edit because what I want to show you here is now we get everything the same as before but if you notice we have these little these little spheres and if I hover over them notice that I get another if I actually select on it it'll turn blue and if I bring that up here I can change my arrows to in and out now, another thing you can do is you can change if you want to just, we have what is a synch synchronize both sides. If I select that, the synchronize is off. So if I select out, notice only this particular arrowhead is now out and the other one is still in. Now, if I place it back and I go ahead and select synchronize both sides, there they go together now, both sides will go in and out when I select. I can also change the arrow head itself right here. And then also I can go into arrow line settings. 
which I will, because here we're gonna change the color. Now here we have the arrow head, the arrow line, and here we can make any kind of edits to it. We can change the stub even. Um, if I wanna make a change to just one color, if I come up to scope, I wanna then unselect or take the check out of the box and I can now make one arrow line side a different color than the other. But if I want to make them both the same color at the same time, kind of like synchronizing, I would select the scope to apply to entire dimension. And now I'm going to go ahead and select the color box. I'm going to select black and select OK. And once I'm kind of happy with all of that, I can close it. And I can also do the same thing here. If you notice, I have these nodes back here. If I select on them, that will change the colors for these lines. Also, I can come back, and if I select our, dim our dimension itself, if I select on that node in the center, it brings this dialog box back up. And if I also, if you can see the arrows here, I can actually extend the arrows, or actually the lines to the arrows, with the little arrowheads within it. And we can create a gap and we can place a number within the gap as well. Now the next thing is I want to change these line colors I know. So if I select this node here, notice again I get another little dialog box to synchronize both sides. I can change the jog if I want one side or the other using the synchronize. I can then also edit the extension lines if I go in here, here's the extension line. My scope is applied to entire dimension. So if I select one of these boxes to change the color, I'll select black. And again, now once I'm happy with that, this should all be in a black color dimension. And there it is. Now go ahead, if I move it, you can see that it's in three dimensions on this part.